Hey everyone, it's Christian Butzek, local Vancouver realtor, and for today's video, I want to do a BC real estate forecast for 2023. And so I think you'll find this is going to be a lot of fun, and it's also going to be very enlightening because we're going to look under the hood and drill a little deeper on some of the news reports that you see and some of the numbers so that you have a clear understanding of where this goes. While we can't say with 100 degree accuracy, we can get a general sense of where this train is going. And so we're gonna do that in this video. So the first thing we're gonna talk about, and you can see those bullet points on the left hand side, is we're gonna look at predictions and how you should be aware of them. We'll talk about a famous prediction from Canada's Mortgage Housing Corporation. Uh, Beware of those headlines. And then some government initiatives and what are the impact for example banning foreign buyers the cooling off period rental restrictions being lifted what difference does it make we will look at the impact of in the increase of mortgage rates on the decline in sales and the impact on a buyer's budget and then i'm going to get out my crystal ball and look at a few more trends long term that we're seeing for example we're becoming immigration nation uh, we'll look at bc housing starts and i'm going to share with you my best guess so when it comes to predictions beware of them and the reason i say that is Uh, where you listen to an economist, a talking head on television, everybody has predictions to make. And often those predictions are wrong. Here is a great example from the title of a book in 1979, Japan is number one. And, you know, looking at this now, we think, "What, what a joke. I mean, Japan never became number one. It certainly is a strong economy, but it did not suppress the United States and by any extent and actually kind of their economy or at least their stock market collapsed in 1989-1990 and today is in a, a funk but at the time and for more than 15 years really late 70s all through the 1980s there was this big concern that Japan would su- supplant the United States as the number one economy And that did not happen. So this book was written by a Harvard social scientist and what we would call an expert. So beware of predictions. They do not always come true. And here is a good example of this. You have the CMHC, the Canada Mortgage Housing Corporation. Famous headline, predicts house prices could drop by 18%. Now, uh, if you look a little below the, the writer's name, You can see the date of this was May 20th, 2020. And what happened? Well, we know that prices went very much in the opposite direction. And you can see it here. That May 2020 in red is the, that article uh, was released or close to that time period. And of course, it did not go down. In fact, it went up. The market went up here in the local Vancouver area by over 40%. So, th- and the reason I share this with you is just to highlight the lack of, not credibility, but the, the lack of certainty with these predictions. And like many Canadians, I tend to believe my government when they say, oh, this is going to happen. Or You have to re- take these things with a grain of salt. Now, Let's move on from that. Here is a more recent prediction from August 2022. And here it says TD is expecting an unprecedented drop in home prices. And then in the first paragraph, it says 20 to 25%. Well, that's kind of already happened in a lot of areas. Like if you looked at Vancouver, for example, not, not so much Vancouver, but the, the, the sleepy suburbs, we call them bedroom communities, the, the Langleys, the Maple Ridges, the Abbotsfords, the missions, yes, detached home prices have come off there quite a bit in the high teens to even the low 20s. So this is by no means going out on a limb. If you get closer to the core, let's say the the Burnaby area or even Vancouver East and West, home prices are probably off about 11, 12 percent uh, in the last year. This is something that's really already occurred. Uh, look 
at headlines and really ask yourself questions. Here's a great example. Home prices down 50% in GTA. That's the what I have. The actual headline appeared in the Toronto Star and it says King Township homeowners struggle with new normal after 50% price plunge. Well, you know, you, you might read that and be shaking in your boots. The reality of it is that the first question you would want to ask yourself is where is King Township? And if you look on it on the map or it's a little highlighted there with the red boundary and it is a a uh, very sparsely populated community northwest of Toronto, north of Vaughan. There's actually not that many people that live here. It's it's in the Oak Ridges Moraine, that protected green belt north of Toronto. And it very much is, uh, you know, rolling hills and, and large estates. And the reality is that that headline, that 50% plunge, is actually based on only 20 sales. And you can see that... Uh, here below in the blue line. So there were 148 homes on the market and 20 of them sold in July of 2022. Now, that's a very low sample size. You cannot be uh, you know, basing mar- the, the, the entire market on um, such a small sample size. You know, it would be like looking at the Belcara area, uh, the Be- Belcara municipality in off Indian Arm in the Vancouver area, which if you're not from Vancouver, you may not even have heard of it or know where it is. And it's it's our version of King Township. There's only several thousand homes there. But certainly, you're going to have a wide disparency between the uh, the sale prices from any given period. And certainly, if you, you, you have su- such a small sample set. So let's move along. We have the foreign buyer ban. You can see at the podium it says, making housing more affordable. And at the time, this was back in April, it was proposed, it is now official, and it will come into effect in January of 2023. The reality is that this is not going to make a dent in affordability. Homes will not become affordable because of this ban. And the reason is very simple, is that we don't have all that many foreign buyers. And I asked myself this question, as you probably are too, how many foreign buyers are out there? Well, here is an example for the Vancouver area. And you can see there was just a small spike in the early part of 2020, but once the pandemic hit, and that's been, so, so we've been sort of now, uh, you know, two and a half years after the initial lockdowns, you can see that from June of 2020, that's to the further right-hand side, we are at about 1%. So out of a thousand homes, 10 are bought by foreign buyers. Well, what difference does that make? If you take 10 buyers out of the buying pool, it's probably not going to make a big difference at all, right? We, you won't even notice it. And that is what will happen. So let's look at a second government initiative. This is here from the provincial government in British Columbia, cooling off period for home buyers. With, And I, I love the way the writer here lists the head or writes the headline. He says, BC passes cooling off period for home buyers with no idea how it'll work. (laughs) Well, we do know how it'll work now. Uh, Basically, it gives buyers three days to back out of a of a subject free offer. And well, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. And the reason why is that this is specifically a cooling off period. And Well, you know, how many subject-free offers are there, do we see out there right now? And frankly, I would say out of a hundred home purchases, maybe two or three at the most in this present market are with unconditional offers. Uh, So this is not going to have an impact. Um, you know, just just as a as an FYI, the this cooling off period, you know, backing out of a home purchase now comes with a penalty of a quarter percent. So if you made a million dollars offer and you backed out of it, uh, you would pay a penalty of two thousand five hundred dollars. But it's not going to have a material impact on the number of buyers and sellers in the market or what they uh, what they can afford. 
Moving along, we have the rental restrictions being lifted. And this is from the new Premier of British Columbia, who announced in November of 2022, hey, Stratas, you can no longer cap the number of people who, who can rent. Now, just from a availability perspective, this makes a lot of sense because now renters can live in those older Kitsilano West End build, uh, buildings in the Vancouver area, which prior uh, came with a lot of restrictions. And uh, normally those restrictions were in place because, you know, there were older people that lived in the buildings and they didn't want their strata to turn into a, a hotel or a party building. And so they put these restrictions and, uh, you know, there may have been 80 units and they said five can be rented max. Okay, great. Now, owners can rent more units and tenants will have more options, but it's not going to make a difference in terms of affordability. If anything, we're now going to see more investors be able to uh, buy into stratas that they would have avoided in the past because they, they, it made no sense to them to buy something that they couldn't rent out. So let's look at the impact of rate hikes on condo buyers, because I think this is the big story. And if you look at March 2022, and let's say you had a an, a couple going to buy a one-bedroom condo, it's a starter home, their very first one, in the local Vancouver area, you'd be looking over, you know, about $700,000 March 2022. And if you're going in with a 20% down payment, uh, which is approximately 540000 a little bit more than that, and you amortized it for 30 years with a 3.25% mortgage rate, which is what it was earlier this year, you can see there, sort of in the middle upper portion of your screen, the monthly payments were just over $2,300 a month, plus strata fees, plus a, you know maybe 70 bucks for insurance. And so the monthly carrying costs there would have been 28, maybe 2,900 a month. Now look at the impact that the rate increases have on buyers. And this is December 2022. And you can see at the, the bottom left-hand portion, the interest rate I'm applying there is 5.5%. It's to the same mortgage amount. And that brings us to payments, middle bottom of your screen, over $3,000 a month. So effectively, this couple's payments in nine months has gone up by $700 a month. And this does not factor in the latest rate hike that we had in early December. So quite, uh, quite simply, what we have is uh, buyers having to qualify for a lot more, and this is a real dent in their pocketbook, and this is what's sidelining a lot of home buyers right now, whether it's those buying condos or in the next slide, let's say a couple buying a starter level house. Let's say a couple's looking at Coquitlam or New Westminster, where you might cost you about 1.5, 1.6 million to get an entry level house. You might still have to do some renovations on it to bring it up to, to speed, uh, rent out the basement perhaps. In March, that 3.25% mortgage on a $1.2 million uh on a $1.2 million mortgage would have equaled payments of $5,200 a month with a rental helper who's paying $2,000 a month in the basement. That was only $3,200 a month for this couple that uh, that they had to shoulder. Fast forward, we December 2022, with the interest rates at 5.5%, that same mortgage amount, 1.2, is now going to cost $6,800 a month. And again, it does not include the most recent rate hike that we had in December. So we we can see that this, by far, is having the biggest impact on the market. And I think is going to be the story going forward is where do interest rates go from here? And more on that in a moment. Now, uh, my crystal ball, what, what do I... Uh, predict well. I what I like to do is look at long-term trends because I think those are the best uh, indicator as to what to expect in the decades to come. So let's do that. 
The biggest trend is what I call immigration nation. And this is that Canada is, uh, we all know, our, our, uh, an immigrant-friendly country. My parents came from, from Europe, and, and yours probably came from somewhere else, too. There's a good chance of that. And now, you can see in this headline, why is Canada inviting 1.5 million immigrants in the next three years? Well, we know that there's a lot of job vacancies to fill. In fact, the, the government, uh, the Canada government site is sh saying that there are almost a million job vacancies right now across the country. So these folks, we can't get them here fast enough. Now, what we do know is that immigrants go to basically one of three big centers. They go to Toronto for jobs, Montreal if they speak French, and they often come to Vancouver to study, to retire, or for the lifestyle. So we're going to have a lot of people moving to our province. And we have, in the last, in the last year, 2021, for example, uh, we had over... 100,000 people move here, and I'll, I'll, we'll touch on this in a moment. Now, what does this mean? Well, 1.5 million newcomers to Canada every, uh, every three years means one new Calgary every three years. I mean, that, the, the population of Calgary is a little less than that. But think about, you know, pin-dropping another Calgary on Canada in every three years. I mean, uh, obviously, they're not, immigrants will not go to one specific location. They will spread out over the country to the major urban areas most, uh, most often, but it's going to put a big strain on, on our, the housing and rentals that we do have. Be, and it explains why rent prices have skyrocketed in the last 24 months. It explains why home prices have jumped so much here in the Vancouver area since we had the Olympics. And very simply, it is due to the fact we have a lot of people moving here every year. And here is the headline from the from the uh, uh, from online. BC welcomes more than a hundred thousand people, the most in sixty years. So that was from last year. I, I recall the premier uh, sitting in on a, a call with the premier uh, when he spoke to the real estate board, and he uh, he mentioned it was a hundred and three thousand in twenty twenty one is is what he had said. And so this begs the question if all these people are moving here, well, how many homes are being built? That's why uh, we have this next slide. How many homes are we adding per year in BC? And so I've just uh, highlighted here and read the totals at the top. You can see it for every year. And uh, I think, you know, go to 2020, 2021, uh, you can see that actually we added the most that we have in the last 10 years, which was just shy of 45,000. And that's still not enough, my friends. So as long as people keep moving here and Vancouver is a desirable place and there are jobs opening up, whether it's in the tech sector or in, um, in construction or even maybe something um, outside the city, like mining and forestry, uh, people will move here, uh, and uh, it's certainly a very, very beautiful, maybe the most beautiful pocket of of uh, North America, and we're lucky for that. And so, but we're still not building enough homes because if each and every one of those immigrants were were a couple, that's fifty thousand. That's still not enough. Uh, new homes being added every year. And that is why the new premier in BC has discussed forcing uh, mandates or, or, or minimum targets on municipalities so that they meet certain numbers in terms of adding supply every year to the market. So my best guess, well, I think it really depends first on what happens with interest rates. If interest rates continue to rise, I think we're going to have a very soft market and we're going to continue to see it edge lower until interest rates stabilize, until the, the general buying public has a sense that, okay, what, we, what the rates are today are, are probably what they're going to be, you know, uh, a year from now or three years from now. Until that time, I, d I don't think we're going to see a, a recovery in the market. I do think that if we saw rates stabilize and so they, let's say they stayed where they are now for a, a you know, nine months, 12 months, at some point then we would see a recovery. 
if we look back to 2008, for example, and you can see it there in the blue line, that is the detached market. You can see that that's actually the the world, the financial crisis. And uh, September of 2008, Lehman Brothers went belly up. And uh, the following six to nine months, uh, the market tailed off about eight to 10 percent. It was uh, very slow until the spring of about 2009. And there you can see uh, the, the blue line start to track back north uh, from the late spring of 2009. And so it, it takes time for the general buying uh, public psychology to shift. I find it new, no, normally takes about six to nine months for them to get used to the new normal, which in this case is, you know, interest rates at four, five, and 6%. And so I would expect by sort of maybe, if, if things stayed the same with rates now, that maybe by early, late summer, early fall, we would start to see a recovery and just a gentle tracking north of prices, but nothing, nothing too extraordinary. Mind you, I could be wrong, of course, but that's that's just that's my best guess. So we we hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got comments or questions on it, feel free to leave those below. Um, you know, I've I've been in business for quite some time, and we uh, we love to meet with families and uh, help them along. That's why we are. That's why I call myself a family realtor. If you have comments or questions, or you just you need to discuss something personal to your situation, you can reach out to us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.